Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Steph if you are here for the first time. It has been a while since I've sat and spoke to camera. Actually, I don't remember the don't even remember the last time I did that. Uh, it's been a lot of travel content. I went to Bali with my boyfriend, so I vlogged all of that. Uh, there was like four or five vlogs of that. I went to Copenhagen, and I can't even remember my last videos before that. But it has been a very long time since I've just sat by myself and spoken to camera about life and girly things and all of that kind of stuff. So I thought I would take the time today to kind of just fill you in and give you a bit of a life update. Shortly after I got back from Bali, I wanted Bali to be like a stress-free trip where I wasn't working, um, where I could just enjoy time with my boyfriend and just be really present and in the moment. But unfortunately, life gets in the way. I want to keep things authentic and all of that. So I had a few brand deals to do whilst I was out there. I ended up working a lot and it got very stressful. I then decided that when I came back, I had like two days. I then went to Copenhagen for a press trip, which was an amazing press trip, don't get me wrong. But I just wanted some downtime. So I had a family holiday coming up to Portugal and I messaged my management and all of the brands that I work with. And I was just like, look, for eight days, I am not going online. I am not even turning on my phone. So that is what I did. I was going away for four or five days, I think. I think I think I was supposed to go away for five days, but I booked eight days off so that I had some like adjustment time when I came back to the UK after being offline. That is the first time I've done that in four years. So I've been working in social media now for like, yeah, four years. How mad is that? I don't think I've turned my phone off for that long once. And I realized that is really unhealthy. Um, and I just need some time away from my phone because I was like, I don't know what I want to post, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like I don't really know myself right now. I had a bit of like a, what's the word? identity crisis and I was just like I don't know who I am I don't know the person I want to be I feel like a week offline just really enjoying time with friends and family is really going to help that so I went to Portugal and there was like 15 of no it must be more than that I think there was like 20 of us that all had this villa together uh, my boyfriend was there my best friend since I was like four was there and all of her friends and my brother was there and it was just so nice and it was amazing and we had the best time and we went out drinking we had nights in where we cooked we had nights in where we hired speakers and had like a villa party and for a week I literally felt like I was living in Love Island it was amazing and I was just totally offline and I had no idea what was going on with the world I didn't care what was going on with the world and I could really be present and in the moment for the first time without thinking because like I can still be present and in the moment and enjoy my time when I'm online but in the back of my mind there's still an element of oh my god I've got work to do or I should be doing this or I could be doing this and it was just quite toxic so for a whole week it was so lovely to just sit and enjoy people's time so it got to the fifth day and my boyfriend and I walked from our villa down to the harbour and I'd had such a good time like it had been so peaceful I'd got up when I wanted to get up I just lounged about by the pool I have not laughed that much in so long so we walked down to the harbour and him and I just sat having smoothies watching people go by and it was really really lovely and um I looked at him and I was like, I don't want to leave. And he had to because he he plays uh, rugby full time. So his training schedule meant that he had to go home. But he was like, you've booked off eight days offline. Like you don't have to work for the next three days. Why don't you just stay out longer? Because we'd only gone for five days and everyone else had gone for like 10. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going to change my flight. So I changed my flight there and then. I stayed out three days longer with um, the other guys and I just chilled. And it was it was weird being there without my boyfriend because obviously he'd been such a big part of the experience up until then. But I just felt so calm and I felt like I could come back to the UK and just have a fresh outlook and fresh perspective of what I wanted to do. It's hard because I've never actually consumed social media as just a consumer like since I've been using it I've been posting on it as like a business almost my Instagram started about four years ago and I used it straight away to kind of be an online diary for myself and then it started to gain followers and all of that kind of stuff I don't actually know what it's like to just be a consumer online and to just switch off your phone when you want to so after that I came back and I was so calm and I felt really good about myself and about what I was doing and I knew what I, I could kind of figure out what I was passionate about and have that I know it's ridiculous to say it was only a week offline to me it was like a retreat and I had time and space in my mind to think all of these things and and to get excited about things again because I'm not saying that I don't like my job I absolutely love my job but posting everything online all the time can be quite overwhelming I needed to almost remove myself from that situation and look at it from an outsider's perspective and realize what I had so I appreciated it and made the most of it kind of thing so then two days later one of my best friends Molly took me away for three days she took me to Norfolk Norwich Norfolk 
they're both very close but I can't Norfolk yeah yeah she took me to Norfolk for three days and we were just so on the same wavelength like we really wanted to do the same things and she was teaching me all of the things that she'd learned recently about how precious time is and what you should do with your time and she told me about a book by Eckhart Tolle called A New Earth which changed her whole perspective around people and, and herself and her mind. We listened to podcasts with Oprah Winfrey and Eckhart Tolle about your mindset. Oh my god I just I was then in the space because I wasn't so stressed and anxious I was in the space to absorb all of this information and all of this like spiritual healing and this sounds so airy fairy but we watched documentaries on Netflix called Heal about positive mindset healing diseases we watched another netflix documentary called happy all about how countries that are the happiest actually have the least but they just appreciate everything they have and all of these things i felt like i was so lost before i went to portugal and then going to portugal and realizing that i can survive with just amazing friends and family and then going away with molly and all of these things like coinciding it just made me feel amazing like i'd lost so much confidence in myself in my abilities and everything and i just needed that time and that space to kind of absorb everything so that's the first life update and kind of i was getting a lot of questions about why have you gone offline like completely why don't you just come on to post and all of that kind of stuff but it's quite like i said before it's quite overwhelming so i not only post on instagram and social media but i reply to every comment that i see um i reply to as many dms as i can so i am constantly on my phone trying to help people as much as i can and sometimes there's a saying you can't pour from an empty cup and i think i've just been pouring 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 and not kind of refilling my own jug that i needed that time so that's kind of why i went offline and now when i'm online it's such a nicer place to be i know that sounds stupid but there's this thing online at the moment called like the offline 48 where you go offline for 48 hours a week so like maybe your weekend and I I mean I'm not gonna say like delete all the apps off your phone because if you did I wouldn't have a job but I think it is so important to switch off when you can because you miss so much I can't even explain it you just miss so much so long story short that is why I went offline for a week then came back online and then what happened then I had this epiphany that I was going to change my Instagram name so it's in the process of being changed right now so I don't know if as this video posts it's still Healthy Chef Steph it could have changed by now but basically I decided that I wanted to change my name from Healthy Chef Steph which is the original Instagram name that I chose four years ago when I was just using it as a food diary it's called Healthy Chef Steph because I when I was struggling with an eating disorder became a feeder and I used to make food for everyone around me force feed them it and be like oh my god I'm not eating you eat kind of thing I referred to myself as Chef Steph because it just rhymed and it just fit and it just worked and it kind of caught on with people so I went to make that Instagram Chef Steph and sadly that was taken so I just whacked a healthy in front of it it started out as purely food like I didn't even post my name actually that's a lie it was healthy Chef Steph course I posted my name but like I didn't post my second name nothing of me it was purely 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 food and like snacks and drinks and whatever looking back at the first posts it was so cringe as I've grown and evolved so is my page and now it's more fitness lifestyle travel and to be totally honest hardly any food and that's not because my passions have like changed like I still love food but I don't have as much time to prepare it and make it look pretty like I did before so it's just kind of changed a bit and I have new passions and and new things that I love that I want to share and talk about too so I decided to change my name from Healthy Chef Steph to Steph Ellswood which is just my name I don't know it just came to me in a vision and I just decided you know what I'm just gonna call it my name because then I can post about what I want to do like I felt as Healthy Chef Steph people were always asking me like oh, why are you called Healthy Chef Steph when you don't cook and I was like uh, I don't know. I just decided it was time to kind of grow and evolve and move on kind of thing. So I made this big announcement on Instagram about how I was going to change my name and this is what I was going to change it to. Like I was so sneaky and I'd already made a side page with that name so that no one could steal that name because imagine going to change your Instagram name and someone's made an account with that name. Like I would have just been fuming. But yeah, so I made this big Instagram post announcement and I was like, yeah, this is happening. Next Monday I'm going to change my Instagram name. It got to the Sunday and I was like, oh, I might change it a day early. Like, oh, surprise. Um... And I went to change my name and I just couldn't. I was like, eh. Anyway, this is going to make me sound like such an arsehole and I really hope it doesn't. But basically, I've got a verified tick on Instagram. And apparently, it's a lot of a longer process to change your name. Because that tick is obviously attached to that particular name. So if I change the name, like, it was just a very long process. I applied to Instagram to get it changed. Didn't hear back. I applied again. Emailed from a, a different account didn't hear back. I'm still in the process of actually finding someone that can help me 
to change my name. So the, the name change is pending and it is something that I'm really excited about and nervous about, but I feel like I've kind of almost outgrown Healthy Chef Steph as a name. So that's that. Then what else do I have to update you on? Ow. Oh, I have braces. Yeah, they're really sore. I got Invisalign. When did I get it? What day are we on? Tuesday? No, we're on Wednesday. Uh, six days ago. So last Thursday I got my Invisalign and I'm actually documenting every kind of week on um, a separate vlog so keep an eye out for that because I'm going to be really honest about my experiences. I have to have it for 14 weeks and the way Invisalign works is I've decided what I want my teeth to look like and all of this and then there's like a massive simulator, your teeth are all scanned and then all the data and whatever is programmed into this computer and then it moulds your teeth how they are now and then it shows you how they'll look and then they formulate, I'm using all these big words that are probably wrong, but they kind of like create these these mouth guards um, and these removable braces that you change every week so every week they get smaller and smaller and smaller and slightly more into close to the shape of what you want your teeth to look like until you're finished so I'm on week one of these mouth guards and they are really sore like the first day I had blisters um, my mouth is that really dry so my lips are always dry and cracking but obviously I'm only in week one so I know I'm gonna get my dream teeth so I can't complain but it's just been hard I've been really insecure about talking to people oh talking to people because one I don't want to spit on them like I just did and two you have to have these lumps like you're gonna find out more about it when you watch my Invisalign vlog but they put lumps on your teeth to help keep the mouth guards in place and move certain teeth in certain directions and it does make like my top lip look like I've had lip fillers like really bad lip fillers and then because my lips are always dry I can't smile properly so then it looks like I've got a resting bitch face and then I'm just really insecure to talk to people because I feel like it's all they can see like obviously you can't see them because they're called Invisalign because they're basically invisible but I'm just very aware of them in my mouth so I'm very aware of people looking at them and kind of picking up on them so yeah I'm very excited for when the 14 weeks are over to be honest obviously I'm so grateful that I'm getting this treatment and that my teeth are going to be straight at the end but just right now I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself but like I said I'm documenting everything on a separate vlog all in one place just so that anyone that is experiencing Invisalign can or thinking about Invisalign I can share all my tips and tricks and just you can watch all in one video kind of thing what else do I have to update you on name change offline Invisalign um I don't know, it all depends on whether you follow me on Instagram or not, but I'm just quite honest and open with my story. So like if I'm out on a night out, I probably will story, I'll probably be a drunk mess and I'll probably post about it and probably regret posting them in the morning, watch them back and be like, oh, I'm such an embarrassment, but leave them up anyway. Last year, after I went through a breakup or whatever, I was going out all the time. I was going out like three, four nights a week, getting back at five o'clock in the morning and just kind of living my best life, but don't think it was actually my best life. I was just drinking a lot. I'm not sure if that was well I'm definitely sure it was because I was kind of like not sure of myself so it was just easier to forget about it when I was under the influence of alcohol but then obviously I met my current boyfriend and that kind of all changed and I became a soppy mess and instead of going out three or four times a week I wanted to stay in and cuddle three or four times a week but then in the lifestyle that he is in so he is a rugby player so every weekend there's a game you go and watch the game and win or lose you go out and celebrate so you either celebrate him not being injured or you celebrate them winning or something like that and his teammate are the most fun people I've ever met like they're always up for a laugh they're such lovely boys like they care about everyone like if you're out with them they will protect you no end like if any that if ever you feel like uncomfortable or there's trouble starting they're there to protect you and you feel really safe to kind of just let loose and have a great time I was drinking again most weekends it wasn't just like a little glass of wine it was like heavy drinking it got to when he was on his off season so he gets one month off a year between seasons um and that's obviously when we went to Bali and stuff. And I just decided, you know what? I'm not going to drink. Like, I feel like I've abused my body over the last year of so much alcohol. And I used to just sometimes drink as, like, courtesy. So if my friends wanted to go out, I'd go out and end up getting drunk. Or at a meal, I'd be like, should we just get a glass of wine? End up getting a bottle. And it was just kind of a lot. Um, so I just was like, if I just go cold turkey and see if I can do it and see if I find it easy, like I might feel amazing and I'm going to have this amazing Balinese experience where I'm eating fresh vegan food every day. I'm in the sun, I'm in the sea, I'm in nature. Why not be my purest version of myself and stuff? So in any situation where my boyfriend and I were going to have a cocktail, like say we're going to watch the sunset, both him and I would have a fresh coconut and it kind of felt the same. Like you were still having a delicious drink, but it wasn't alcoholic. So I'd gone three weeks, kind of cold turkey, no alcohol then. Then I came back 
and I had a few days and then I went to Copenhagen for like a press trip like I said before and on the first night I was the only person that I knew there like I didn't know anyone else there it was from it was people from all over the world if you if you want to see what we got up to I do have a vlog of it and it was one of the best weekends ever actually it was really 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 lovely because I had to be pushed outside of my comfort zone and I had to make like speak to people and make small talk to them actually form connections with people and all of this stuff that I'm terrified of doing. On the first night we had a welcome drinks on the rooftop bar and there was a guy going around with champagne or sparkling water and I was like no one here knows me, no one here knows that I used to be this big drinker, I'm just going to take a sparkling water. So I did and then just that weekend I didn't drink and no one ever questioned me, no one was ever like oh why are you not drinking kind of thing. So I was like, I'm feeling really good in myself for not drinking because the problem was I was going out and having an amazing night, don't get me wrong. I don't regret any of the nights that I've had out. But it was the next day I'd wake up and I'd obviously feel awful or tired, whatever. I'd eat shit food, but I'd wake up with a racing heart rate and I just had this, what I call like anxiety. So I was just, I'd question everything I did like, oh my God. And I'd just be really anxious for two or three days afterwards. So I'd say I'd drink on the Saturday, I'd be anxious till the Tuesday, recover and then go out and drink on the Saturday again. And it was just a lot and it was just a lot. I wasn't getting any of that anymore so I felt really calm in myself. I came back from Copenhagen and I was like okay that's a month without drinking. I've survived, no one's questioned me, there's been no peer pressure, there's been no one making me feel as if I have to drink, there's been no one making me feel as if I'm boring, like don't get me wrong I can still go out and party as hard as everyone else whilst I'm not drinking kind of thing. Then in Portugal it was quite a boozy one like everyone was always day drinking and then there'd be villa parties and all of this kind of stuff and I was happy to just not drink, have a soda lime and just get involved with everything but just not be drunk. I could laugh at all my friends who were drunk and, and still giggle along and not feel out the loop. And then there was one night when we went out and there's like bar hopping in like the main town centre of Lagos where we went and it's such a good night out so I was like do you know what I've not drunk in a month and a half now I'm gonna have a night of drinking and see how I feel. So I had one drink before we went out and then we went out to the club and I was dancing on the bar and stuff and I was having a good time and I'd maybe had like one or two shots or whatever and I felt good, like I felt so in control of my body, I was having a good time and whatever and then we decided we wanted to leave. This is a bit hard because we don't know for sure whether or not the following what I'm about to tell you happened but either way it just was not a pleasant experience so we got back home to the villa I remember leaving the club I remember walking through the town I remember getting in the taxi I remember who I was with I remember getting back to the house I remember ripping off half a baguette and just sitting there eating it and just having a great time and then I don't remember anything there was just a switch and people different people have kind of relayed different things to me so all I remember is waking up the next morning and apparently like, I was just staring into blank space and my jaw was like wobbling. Apparently I just went really limp. Someone carried me to my room and apparently I was just lying face down in a pillow, like almost trying to eat the pillow. Like my jaw was just like swinging from side to side. I just wasn't myself at all. So everyone was saying they did like checks or whatever on me to, to see if I'd been spiked. And people were saying like I hadn't or some people were saying it looks like I had. And it was kind of hard because no one was a doctor or anything like that. But I was breathing and my brother was getting, luckily my brother was there and was an actual saint like he's such an overprotective big brother and he hadn't gone out that night so he was there to look after me he was making me drink water um, my boyfriend was apparently cuddling me like so worried and being really cute and stuff um, and then I fell asleep and I was fine obviously I don't know if I'd just become a lightweight because I had a drunk in a month and a half and a drink and a couple of shots had kind of like pushed me over the edge I don't know but one thing that did happen was when my boyfriend was in the club I was dancing on the bar with a few of my girlfriends and he was like watching over me and he made a friend in the bar like one of the Portuguese guys and he said they were speaking for a while they were like getting along having a laugh and he was holding his drink and he just felt something in his like peripheral vision and he went like this and as he did, someone above him had dropped a pill and as his hand, it was like Matrix apparently, as his hand went over his cup, he caught a pill in between his two fingers. So someone was trying to spike him. So he kicked off and like threw the pill on the floor and then turned to the guy and was like, what the hell? Like, why would you do that kind of thing? And the guy was like, oh, I was giving you a free night. Like, I thought we were mates. Like, I was giving you a good time. And he was like, absolutely not. I'm not having any of this. So he turned and he pointed at every single person he was with in the bar. So it was like me, all my friends, all the guys who were like if you touch any one of those people you have me to answer to kind of thing anyway shortly after that we left so that's why we were kind of under the impression that there is a high chance that I could have potentially be been spiked and I was just like after that whether it was alcohol 
whether it was something else the feeling the next day i just didn't enjoy and i was like do you know what i don't think drinking's for me i still could have gone to that club with all of my friends and had an amazing time maybe i would have crashed an hour before them or like half an hour before them but i would have had an amazing time laughed at all the same things they were laughing at without the alcohol and i feel like at the age i'm at now there's so much stigma around it sometimes my friends can be like why are you not drinking da -da 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 -da. and it can really feel like peer pressure and if you don't want to drink it can be i don't know you feel like the odd one out almost but i've kind of just taught myself that i know how I feel and I know that sometimes when I drink I even feel quite anxious and like we went to that bar a couple of nights later and I had to leave because I was like I don't I don't know what's gonna happen like I don't know if that guy's still here and he's gonna spike us again or if he even did do you know what I mean so I was kind of just really anxious about it and I was like I don't want to put this foreign substance in my body if I don't feel safe to um, and I kind of just wanted to touch on that in this video because if anyone else is feeling the same but feeling like their friends are pressuring them into it don't for a second feel like that because I went for dinner going back from Portugal I went for dinner with friends and usually we'll split a bottle of wine between us two she was just like oh should we get a bottle of wine I was like oh, I'm not really drinking she was like oh fair enough I'll just get a glass then and she was so understanding and it was so easy it was just like the Copenhagen situation and I was like I have nothing to worry about or fear or feel anxious about so I was just like do you know what maybe if it's a celebration or if I feel in the mood for it I will have a drink I'm not gonna be like I am sober for the rest of my life I don't know but I just know for now that I'm just enjoying not drinking like my body feels like a temple and it feels great. I've had no anxiety, all of this kind of stuff. So yeah, feeling great. What else did I want to share with you guys? I kind of just wanted to blurt out everything that was in my mind because I feel like I feel a lot better once I've spoken to camera because I'm like, once my problems are out there and hopefully helping other people, I can then, I know they're a problem or I know they're dealt with and I can move on from it. So what else did I want to share with you guys? The last time I think I checked in with you, I was seeing a therapist, I was getting help about my anxiety and all of that. And oh my God, I'm not saying alcohol was the cause of it all, but I feel so much calmer. Like, I think it is also down to the fact that I had this amazing weekend with my friend Molly. Like, she really helped me see perspective, the documentaries we watched, the podcasts we listened to. Just really opened my mind. Like, there's something that Eckhart Tolle spoke about. And it was, I mean, if you read the book, you'll understand it in better detail than I have because I haven't actually read the book yet. I'm just relaying what Molly has told me. And he basically speaks about how every individual has an ego. And now I've always been led to believe that an ego is something that you're like cocky or you're arrogant or just a little bit too, yeah, overconfident. But an ego is just, everyone has one. It's not good, it's not bad. It's just this like thing inside of you. And sometimes in situations, you speak to people and you feel like you deserve something from them so for example say you're having a discussion with someone and you're really fighting to help them see your point of view the moment they see your point of view that boosts your ego after learning all of this from molly like i'm gonna have to read the book and explain it in a better way anytime i was in a situation say for example i was on the tube and someone barged past me usually i'd be like oh like to kind of show them that they barged past me and then they'd be like sorry and then i'd be okay again that was me then getting my ego boosted so then I'd be walking through the tube, someone would barge past me, I'd be like, they didn't mean it, that was totally like an accident. And I just wouldn't react. And then I felt calm. Like you just feel calmer in yourself when you're just like, okay, I don't need anything to boost my ego. I don't need an apology. I don't need um, someone to see my point of view. You can absorb so much more when you're not worried about kind of boosting your own ego, if that makes sense. So since then, like, I've been in a really, really good place. I've been reading up loads about, like, more spiritual things. I've been doing my angel cards when I feel the need to. I've been speaking to friends. And, yeah, it's just been... I've been in a good place. I have found it quite overwhelming to get the kind of work, life, friend, family, relationship balance. But I think that's something that we all struggle with. Like, life is so fast and time gets away from us and I think I'm just learning still how to prioritize like a full-time job that has no work hours it never stops and it's not like a routine I have no routine in my life so it's hard to kind of slot things in and put things in their boxes and be like okay I'm on I'm in friend mode now or I'm in family mode or I'm in work mode like it's really hard for that so if I find a miracle cure I will share that with you guys but I'm yet to find one just in terms of in myself and in my own like internal monologue I think I'm being nicer to myself if that makes sense but yeah I just kind of wanted to share that little life update if you have any questions feel free to comment below now I'm home for a while I'm going to be doing more of these like sitting to camera talking videos so the next one I'm going to do is I just want to sit down and do my full journey from having an eating disorder to getting it diagnosed to telling my family telling my friends 
getting a therapist, going through treatment and then coming out the other side. Um, I still get lots of, especially female, like vulnerable girls, feeling so lost and all of these things. And I'm no professional, like don't get me wrong, I've got no qualifications in psychology or mental health or anything like that. But I can tell you my own experiences and hopefully if you haven't already pushed you to tell someone to then make the next stages into getting help and all of that kind of stuff. So if you do want to see that, make sure that you click subscribe and I will be telling my journey from start to finish about that. If there is anything else you want to see or there are any videos that you want me to film, even if they're like challenge videos of my family or whatever, please comment because I now feel good enough and have the time to do all of that and I want to be posting more YouTube stuff. So I'm going to be posting every Wednesday at 5 and every Sunday at 5. So if you want to see those videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and yeah, I will be back again soon. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.